What's up guys, welcome back to Laser Everything, and in this series we are discussing how to run EasyCAD on an M1 or M2 Mac, or any MacBook for that matter. Uh, if you are on an x86 like Intel MacBook, then you are virtualizing Windows and you got to skip so many of these steps and it went so much faster than, uh, <laughs> than we are going here. Uh, but we are emulating, we're on an M1 and an M2 Mac, and we're emulating an x86 processor. That means we have a virtual processor that's going to allow us to install these x86 drivers. And that's what we're gonna be doing today. Uh, today we're gonna be unpacking EasyCAD and installing the drivers. And we can start this just by right-clicking these zip folders here and clicking Extract All. And we're gonna make sure that we entirely extract both of these folders. So you can see they have the little zipper on them. Uh, that means they are compressed and we do not want to run EasyCAD compressed. That's going to cause a whole bunch of problems for us. So uh, while extracting may take a couple minutes here, it's going to be well worth it because the software is actually going to function as intended. So just take a minute and get both of these folders extracted and then we can move on to the next step. Okay guys, when extraction is complete, it will open the extracted folders for you to take a look at. And uh, you know that they are extracted appropriately because they do not have the zipper, they are open folders. So here we have our EasyCAD 2 Community Edition. Uh, and if we open that up, that is gonna be the normal EasyCAD contents that we are used to seeing. And in this folder, we have our 64-bit drivers. And again, if you need these, you can download them right off of the Laser Everything website. We cover that in detail in the first episode. So if you missed that, please make sure you go back and watch it. Now, everything else that we're going to do today is gonna to be in Windows. So just for ease of use, I'm actually going to full screen this uh, just cause it is a little easier to look at when it's not window and window. And I'm going to allow it to capture my cursor so that I can control it a little bit easier. We covered that in the last episode of this series. So uh, if you missed that one, go watch that one too. Anyway, uh, so we're here and the next thing we need to do is install our drivers. If we try to launch EasyCAD 2 right now, uh, it's not going to do much for us. So I'll double click that. It's going to pull up the normal EasyCAD agreement uh, nonsense and we'll just hit yes and it's going to load the software. And as you can see, this is all happening in real time. Uh, I'm not speeding up this footage. It's definitely slow, but it is usably fast. Uh, it's, it's not painfully slow, it's just slow. And uh, here we're getting the failed to open LMC driver, so it can't find the driver, uh, and that is to be expected. We haven't installed it, and cannot find a valid LMC device. It can't see the laser. That's also expected because we don't have anything plugged into our machine. So if we hit OK, because this is the community edition, it'll let us come in, edit files, do what we need to do, uh, but it's not going to let us talk to the laser at all, and that's kind of the point to all of this. So for now, we're gonna close EasyCAD. Let's make a quick desktop shortcut so that we don't have to open this every time. We will go to send to and desktop, create shortcut. And there we go, there's our EasyCAD 2 shortcut so that we don't need to come into the folder every time. And uh, if you've watched the other videos, you know this, if you haven't, you don't, but you are gonna want a separate EasyCAD 2 folder for every lens that you have uh, if that's something that you plan on, on you know, using this Windows install for regularly, you're going to want a different folder for every lens. We cover that in other videos, though. I'll throw a card up here in the corner for you if you need to check that out. That said, we do need to install our drivers. Now, the first thing we need to do is come down to search and type device manager. And again, expect this to be slow. Uh, it is certainly slow. Okay guys, so at this point the uh, laser is on and I'm going to plug the USB into my MacBook. And we get a new message here. It says USB device. Would you like to connect this USB device uh, to this virtual machine? Now, uh, yes, <laughs> it, it, right? Um, and we can even click do not ask again because the only time we're gonna be able to use EasyCAD is when we are in our VM. So we can just click do not ask again and confirm and now it's going to show up here in our device manager so so 
So you can see our device manager refreshed on its own and under other devices, we have the USB LMC V2. Now, Windows is not going to install this automatically. We need to install the drivers for this manually. The process is quick and easy. We're gonna right click it and click update driver. Next, we're gonna click browse my computer for drivers. And we're gonna navigate to our desktop because that's where our driver folder is. So we're gonna come down to desktop and then we're gonna click our EasyCAD 2 64-bit drivers folder and hit okay. And we're gonna hit next. And it's going to search the folder for drivers and install them. And we're just going to allow this at the security prompt here. And it says Windows has successfully updated your drivers. So this is a big thing that people get tripped up on because anybody who virtualizes Windows on an M1 or M2 Mac is virtualizing Windows for ARM. It's Windows for ARM processors, not x86 processors. And these drivers will not work. It will say that it cannot detect drivers for your device. Uh, this is working because again, and I keep saying it over and over, but it's very important. We are emulating an x86 processor with our emulation, and that is allowing us to install these drivers. So from here, we can click close and our device manager is going to automatically refresh our list of devices. And inside we can now see the BJJ CZ device laser mark control board V2 USB. This is great. This is farther than 99% of people get in this process, uh, we are we are ready to start marking with our EasyCAD board, guys. So we can close this window now. We should not need to come back into it. And if we launch EasyCAD, now that we have a machine connected and our drivers installed, we should not get either of those errors. So EasyCAD is gonna load up here. There's EasyCAD 2.0. And here we are in EasyCAD, and I can do something simple, like draw a circle. And we should be able to light this. We have to do a little basic setup for our laser first. So I'm gonna come to F3 param really quick. I've got a 110 lens in there right now. So let's just go ahead and set that to 110. I'm gonna do the bare minimum here, guys. For laser controller, uh, this machine has a JPT. Our frequency range is 4,000 to one. And for ports, uh, just really quick, uh, our red light pointer is going to be port four. And our start marking, which is our foot pedal, is going to be port 15. And we're just gonna hit okay on that. There's a lot more to set up and you can check out the EasyCAD 2 crash course. Again, uh, I will link that in the description for you. But uh, just for the, the proof, that this actually does function. Uh, we'll go ahead and just write some basic text in here like, uh, you know, I don't know, let's go classic. Hello world. And we will hit apply. And there's our hello world. And as you can see, uh, it's reasonably quick, even with things like hatching. So if we come into the hatch menu here, um, we do our 0 0.025 line distance and uh, we can even, hell, let's do a cross hatch and hit okay. Uh, it will hatch this up for us. It's just a little bit laggier, but to be honest, EasyCAD 2 is pretty laggy in the first place, so uh, there, you're not gonna notice much of a difference. If you're on a MOPA and you're using the Community Edition, by the way, make sure that you come into the F3 param uh, under laser control and turn on your pulse width, uh, because if you do have a laser where you can set the pulse width, the default is set to four, which is not very useful. Uh, we want to be up closer to like 200. So let's get this set to 200 and uh, maybe a thousand speed, 80 power for our test, just so it's nice and bright. And we should be able to mark this. Uh, we should be marking at this point. A great test to see if you have a good connection is to just red light it. So we'll go ahead and hit red. And there you go, guys. You can actually see the uh, the contour down there, uh, or not the contour, rather, but the outline, the box, uh, lighting up. If we hit stop, we can just come in and click, uh, oh, show contour right there. Sorry, it's been a minute since I've been in EasyCAD. Hit red again. Boom. There's contour with our hello world, uh, which is excellent. 
that is all working exactly the way we want it to work and uh, we have our settings set over here uh, let's just make sure we don't have anything weird going on because I have not checked all of these parameters this is the first time I'm in here you guys have been live with me uh, all along let's just double check this hatch really quick make sure we didn't miss anything in here count one this all looks good 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 so uh, with all that done we can mark guys we're gonna mark inside of Mac OS Ventura on an M1 MacBook Pro using EasyCAD. So check it out. All I need to do is come down here and click mark. And you can hear it ripping and roaring back there. Uh, it is going through the mark just the way we want it to go. And that's uh, that's all very, <laughs> that's all very cool. Um, this whole thing is just astounding to me that we can do this at all and check it out. Look, we are we're in the VM Here it is. <laughs> okay, great. Uh, so if we zoom out here um, Again, just to show you look we're we're in Mac We're in Mac OS right now I'll come up to the Apple here and we will click about this Mac check it out. Look, it's an Apple M1 Pro guys Ventura 13.4.1 and we can simply move this over. We can even overlay it like this, right? And we can just come in and hit mark again. And it's gonna mark again. We're, we're in Mac OS. So um, this can be done again. Is it slow? Yes. Uh, does it have its problems? Yes, uh, of course it does. You could probably optimize window, get rid of some of the underlying services that you're not gonna be using and get it to speed up a little bit. But at the end of the day, the slowness is from uh, emulating the x86 processor, but this tutorial does work. You can mark in EasyCAD uh, whenever you'd like. Look, we'll do some uh, just a little bit more here live. I just want to show you guys like we are, in fact, uh, doing this right now. Uh, and we'll just come hit mark. And uh, it, it works. I mean, it's this is amazing to me. It, it may not be amazing to everybody. I get it. Uh, I'm a tech person. I geek out over this kind of stuff. Uh, this blows my mind that we can do this. I think it's really cool. Uh, and once you have this environment set up, again, it's really easy to start and stop. You can be in and out of Windows in a flash. You can pop over to your Mac and do some other stuff while uh, things are, are running here and it doesn't interfere at all. Uh, all of your normal Mac functions work as expected. So uh, there's really no disadvantage to doing it this way other than the speed deficit uh, but you do get you know all of your uh, network connectivity everything is bridged I don't know what launching Microsoft Edge is going to do right now I wanted to show you guys that the internet worked uh, but that may take a really long time to launch we'll see I, I really recommend re replacing Edge if you haven't already uh, we may do a final episode in the series i'm not really sure where we just talk about uh you know some ways we could try to get windows a, a little more optimized but um you know i from here you you guys can probably take it away on your own uh, you probably don't need me to be telling you what to do so um what is going to happen here i don't even want to click full screen oh hey look at that all right start without your data Man, Edge makes you... Yes, I don't... Nobody cares. Okay. Uh, just go away. Uncheck, confirm, and start browsing. All right, let's see if eBay will load up. Let's just click eBay right here. Oh, my God. Look at all these tabs it tries to open the second you're in Edge. Look, eBay. In Windows, in Mac OS. Uh, I don't know why you would want to do this, but you certainly could. And... Speaking of wanting to do things, let's just talk really quick about why you would want to do this. Uh, number one is for lens corrections, right? If you want to do lens corrections, uh, of course, we have Lightburn in Mac OS, but we do not have a method for conducting automated lens corrections in Lightburn. Uh, so what do we do about that? Well, uh, you're going to go to the EasyCAD crash course and you're going to watch our tutorial on performing lens corrections. But if we open up the EasyCAD 2 Community Edition folder and we scroll down, you will see it does in fact contain core file and core file will work just fine inside of this VM, just like anything else. Uh, we can hit the mark nine points box 
and it's going to do all of that normal marking that we would want to be doing and we can go ahead and take our measurements and things like that so um this all works and that's really great uh the reason it didn't mark by the way is because this is all set wrong so make sure you set these there we go 25 kilohertz and uh our mark speed 200 and let's see do we really need to change anything else uh yeah let's turn this way up so uh 50 on the power output so like just to prove a point here guys so if i mark the nine point box there you go okay so you're you're doing lens corrections you can do that in here too that all works uh if you have easy cad files and you don't have a way to run EasyCAD anymore, you can come in here, watch our new tutorial on how to export EZD files from EasyCAD as SVGs for use in Lightburn or other software. There's a lot of, of use cases for this for heavy Mac users uh, that absolutely do not want to go out and get an Intel or x86 uh, based PC. You can make this work. Uh, and, and so yeah. I think that's about it for this one, guys. Um, remember, you do just want to shut your VM down the nice way uh, whenever possible. So we're just going to come to start and power. And we're going to shut down. And we can probably get this overlay off the screen here. Thank you so much for watching this episode. Uh, I, I really appreciate you stopping by. I sincerely hope that it helps you guys or somebody. Uh, I hope it helps somebody out there. And uh, if you got value out of it, don't forget to smash the like button. Let everybody else know the content is good. Uh, don't forget to subscribe. We may do another episode where we talk about making Windows run a little teensy bit better. Uh, it's not going to be a huge improvement, but there's a couple things that I just feel like um, I, I should mention. So uh, we may do one final episode where we talk about those things. It'll be really fast. And uh, if you love Laser Everything, you want to support the channel, make sure we can keep making this content. You can find out how to do that over at Masters dot laser everything dot net please go check it out and uh, sign up if you can all of the content we make over here at laser everything is made possible because of the members that support the channel over there without them we wouldn't be able to make this content um, so we really appreciate you guys who are already signed up if you're not again it's masters dot laser everything dot net i think that's all i've got have fun playing with your x86 windows on your Mac uh, M1 or M2 computer, and we will see you in the next one.